You can see what the writer's imaginal act was. He actually caught a mood that was really forceful. So when the word terrific came through, it wasn't simply, oh, I think it's terrific. He exploded with terrific to equal the imaginal state of the man who made him say terrific. So catch it and feel it and use your imagination as a great actor would. He has to put himself into the part and play it. And to the degree that he feels it, he gets beyond the footlights. If he doesn't identify himself with the character that he's trying to depict, he never gets over. He has to become the character. And so this one became the character of hearing the actor whose lines he wrote. And the actor was given a line to say, you say terrific. And now listen carefully, because you've got to say it as I am directing it. I don't want any little terrific. I want you to really give it. And so I will now give you the mood that I want you to adopt. And so he gives them to him. And the word comes through exactly to match his imaginal act. And his use of words, to me, uh, fascinates me because not everyone understands the baseball language when he said, he threw me a curve. Something entirely different. It wasn't what I expected. That was less the script that you already said and pronounced good. I don't want that. I want you to pronounce this new statement and say that it is really great. Great. Just great. Of the new script. I haven't even started the new script. I used use my word, but you sort of predated it. You went back in time and called it the other script. And then the man comes back and actually calls it. But after he changed the word from that to terrific. That's really discovering how you use your imagination. But if you don't, and you think, well, it's just on this level, you will never get off. But I want everyone here to really believe it and try it. If I take from you this night, if you're here for the first time, and I've taken or shaken your belief in a personal God outside of yourself, a personal Savior outside of yourself, I don't apologize. Because I know it is true what I've told you. I am not theorizing. I'm speaking from experience. And so when I take this platform and tell you that I know the reality there is God, I wouldn't care what the whole world would say about it. When they say, you don't mean that God truly stood before you, or you stood before him, and you look into the face of man, I say, yes, I did. And it is man. I am a spirit, but it needs man. It's perfect form to really express anything in this world. So it assumes the form of man. So when you see I am in form, the form is man. Just like the little girl who told her grandmother, you know what? I went up last night in my dream right up to the sun. And you know what? He has a face. And you know what? He has hands. And he has feet. And you know what? The ocean, the big ocean, talked to the sun. And you know what? The sun came down to the earth. And you know what? He has legs. And he can walk. And he walked right over to me and kissed me on the cheek. And it was hot. Now, isn't that a silly, silly dream, Grandma? But it's true. There is nothing but God, and God is man. And so when Blake was asked, when you see the sun, do you see a big rum guinea? He said, no. A host of angels crying, holy, holy, holy. He drew him as man. There's nothing but man, because man and God are one. God is man. So I ask you to take what I've given you this night, take it home. And you try it. It costs you nothing, only the effort and the little time that you will spend in doing it. But bear in mind, when you do it, believe it. Because the words are, the word was spoken to them just as it was to us. But it did not profit profit them, because they did not receive it with faith in those who heard it. And so when you do it tonight, do it knowing that that in itself is a creative act, that imaginal act. And be faithful to it.
Now, faith does not give substance to that imaginal act, that unseen reality. Faith is loyalty to unseen reality. You simply are loyal to it. You made a pledge. All right, now you're loyal to the unseen reality. Questions, please. Yes, sir. Now, the, the three tests are quotes from the book of Deuteronomy. And man in this world, the only devil in this world, are the facts of life, the doubts of man. If you could take and personify doubt and give doubt a voice to speak, it would throw at you all the facts of life that would be in conflict with your dream that the dream in itself was reality before wearing a form. And so doubt is telling you, well, if you think you can do all these things, then cast yourself down. For he has given the angels power to lift you up.